Now we're going to discuss a bit about the use of valuation concepts for the development of schemes based on payment for environmental services. The origin of the payment for environmental services, which is PES for short, in the 70s and 80s, there was a lot of concern about deforestation and forest degradation in the tropics all over the world. And this led to a wide-scale adoption of what are called Integrated Conservation and Development Projects, ICDPs. There were over 300 of these kinds of projects developed in various parts of the, of the world, usually around conservation areas in communities where there was some kind of threat uh, associated with incursion by communities into conservation protected areas. Uh, so they wanted to develop some kind of project that could provide income, improve welfare, but without leaving these conservation areas vulnerable. The problem with the ICDPs was that they were very difficult to show how effective they were in really conserving and uh, maintaining biodiversity uh, at the same level for which the conservation areas were set out. and. It also was also very diffi difficult to show that there was really in improved welfare. So you have the two main objectives of setting up ICDPs led to some concern about uh, how you can justify further investment in these kinds of projects from the point of view of, uh, of development or conservation. Scholars uh, were looking at these projects and sort of say, well, you know, what do we do? We don't really see uh, much of a return from our investment in conservation and development projects, maybe we should be, instead of indirectly trying to convince people that they should conserve nature by environmental education and some kind of uh, complementary kind of income, we should just give them some payments right up front and say, if you cease and desist with the kind of damaging activities you're doing on the edge of this conservation area, we'll pay you a few bucks for you to stay at home. You know, either you stay at home or you adopt some kind of uh, activity, ecotourism or, uh, you know, sustainable forest management or non-timber forest product uh, production that would be more compatible with the kind of conservation uh, effort that's being undertaken. So PES could be defined as a provision of ecosystem services through conditional payment. And I'm going to go into more detail on what that means. But in terms of its origin, the whole idea was started up by a guy named Ronald Coase, an economist at Chicago, who in the 1960s developed an institutional analysis of the problem of uh, what was called external cost, the problem of social cost associated with two neighboring properties, one of whom had cattle and the other had crops growing, and the cattle got out of one property and went into the other and uh, caused some damage to the crops. And But they didn't have any real framework for litigation or anything like that, so what could they do to overcome a problem like that? that is often called an externality. They could try to come to an agreement as to who would pay for a fence between the two properties in order to restrain the cattle from getting into the cropland. In this case, they would, uh, could arrive at a, at a negotiated solution, which is considered from an economic point of view to be efficient. You have costs that are associated with arriving at a negotiated solution. Uh, these costs are called transactions costs, and they can be pretty big. You know, if you have two guys on one side of the fence and the other, they can probably come to a negotiated solution. But when you have a whole lot of people who are, the, the, who are receiving the brunt of costs caused by maybe a bunch of different sources of pollution or nutrients that are flowing downstream in the water or sediments, how are you going to find out who's to blame and how are you going to find out who has to pay the cost? You know, how do you define who's responsible and who has the right for a clean environment? In Brazil and in the U.S. Uh, and other countries, uh, we have constitutions that define responsibilities pretty clearly that those who pollute should pay the cost. But these are not always that easy to, to nail down uh, when there's a lot of polluters and there's a lot of people who have to bear the brunt of that pollution. Coming to a, a negotiated solution can be very costly. 
Uh, you can go to the court, uh, bring suit against the, the, the polluters, but that can be long and drawn out and you may not get uh, be satisfied with the result. So then you have regulation and uh, fines and uh, what's called command and control kinds of, of tactics that can resolve that kind of thing. In a more confined situation, like in a situation in which ecosystem services are being provided from upstream landowners to downstream users of water, it would be possible conceivably to arrive at some kind of framework for a negotiation between these parties so that uh, that could be efficient and they could minimize those transactions costs. So the whole idea of PES is to try to uh, overcome this problem of externalities by uh, reducing transactions costs and finding negotiated uh, arrangements institutionally between the parties to external costs. The transactions costs are important. Uh, they may actually exceed the social benefits that are obtained by resolving uh, the externality. And in that case, uh, you may find that it'd be better to have a re regulated situation than, than a market situation that might be developed under uh, ecosystem service payments. So what are the conditions for a successful PES implementation? There are a few common elements that have been put forward by one of our colleagues, the economist Sven Wunder, who is associated with the Center for International Forestry Research, in which the idea of a PES is that you have a voluntary agreement. They must be voluntary. They can't be imposed by an outside authority or by one or other of the parties to the agreement. Uh, that are, but they are made between a what could be called a buyer of ecosystem services and a seller of ecosystem services, who could be uh, one of those people who are up in the upland, who are providing water for those who are in the, the bottom lands. Or it could be an association of uh, people who represent those buyers or sellers so that they can agree more readily on a solution. The idea of the PES is that you ensure the protection or improvement in the environmental services that are provided by the upland providers uh, and that those who are downstream are willing to pay uh, some amount to, uh, to ensure that those on the up, upland side are uh, also satisfied vis-a-vis -vis their costs of having to put their land out of production or to adopt uh, reforestation or agroforestry or some other kind of activity that is less harmful to the situation uh, of provision of ecosystem services that is uh, uh, trying to be set up. Finally, there's a, 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 another kicker to this. It's called a conditionality clause uh, that PES should only be adopted if and only if there is demonstrable improvement in the ecosystem services that are provided from the situation that was present beforehand. If you're going to pay somebody, you want to get something for your money. So if, you, uh, if the payments are made and you look at the situation a few years down the pike and nothing has changed, uh, you're going to say, well, what am I paying for here? I'm going to start getting out of this business. This is not a good deal. Uh, so that would be a problem for the maintenance of these kinds of payments in the long term. So you want to be able to monitor the, uh, the, the activities that are, that are created uh, by the upland uh, providers of services so that they, they actually do show that they have changed their land use or they've changed the way that they uh, dispose of, of waste so that those uh, at the uh, downstream side are actually benefiting from having put the money into the, uh, into the agreement. So the idea here then is this, what we call a provider receives principle instead of the polluter pays principle, which is more common in the command and control setting. The provider receives principle is an, it's an economic transaction in which the suppliers of ecosystem services that can be protected areas, they can be farmers applying conservation practices and so on, they come to an agreement with the beneficiaries of ecosystem services that perceive and value the benefits that are generated. Uh, and what ensues is a PES payment uh, for the beneficiary paying the supplier of the service. We hope that these uh, services will be continuous in the long term. So how do we evaluate whether these kinds of schemes are effective? How can we be sure that they are actually providing an additional benefit to that which would be obtained in a 
in a setting of the status quo, uh, otherwise known as business as usual, uh, BAU. Most of the projects that have been un undertaken under the rubric of PES have not actually measured the e exact change in ecosystem services that are provided in terms of water quality or water quantity, in terms of the, the amount of carbon that is sequestered exactly. But they instead, they uh, define a set of land use practices which are deemed to be uh, better than the BAU based on the scientific literature, our experience, experiments in the area, uh, and then weighting them in, in accordance with the information that is available on the advantages that they have in terms of off-site provision of ecosystem services downstream. There are studies that have been shown more effective in terms of uh, providing the analytic basis for showing uh, the, the benefits from uh, PES, uh, and these require a more uh, detailed statistical, what's called a counterfactual analysis in which you pair a situation where there is intervention with the PES, where there is not an intervention with the PES, and say, well, is this actually better in terms of the ecosystem services that are being provided than the situation which doesn't have the payments underway? And that kind of analysis has been undertaken. In fact, in the case of the, uh, the Bolsa Floresta project that is carried forward by the team in the Amazon that has been presented in this course. So we see that there's uh, there's a use uh, of this information, but there may not be enough information from a short-term study of this kind to be able to show definitively that there has a, been a return, and we hold that the practices that are in use in terms of land use, uh, uh, in terms of the kind of forest management that is underway, will provide those services in the long run. And it's a bit of a of, uh, of faith that we are bargaining on to make sure that uh, in the long run we, we hope we will see greater uh, provision and stability in the in sustainable services provision uh, over time.